Yeah, what's up, YouTube? What's going on, Protect family? What's good? That's your boy, Protect Sports, back with another live stream for y'all today, man. Hope you guys, hope you guys are having a good, good Saturday, man. Staying safe, staying healthy on the streets. I do have a wonderful guest on. I will introduce him in a moment. Y'all probably know what this guy is already. I don't have to really introduce him, but you know, you know, I got, I, I got to be formal. Before I get into it, man, all good to the man upstairs for him will be nothing, man. I just thank, thank my boy Juan for being on here with me. I very appreciate it, man. And uh, I just go ahead and get into it, man. So, Juan, what's up, bro? What's going on, man? How you doing? At first, I want to say I appreciate you for having me on, and it's a blessing to always come on your channel and chop it up about the Washington football team. So, first, I want to say thank you for having me on, and secondly, I'm doing well, man. How about yourself? I'm doing pretty good, bro. I got no complaints. Sergio, what's good, Sergio? Huh? Huh? What's good, huh? What's going on, huh? What's going on, bro? But yeah, man. So today we are talking about the slot wide receiver position specifically in this uh in this in this live stream. Um, we're gonna talk three different guys: uh, Steven Sims Jr., Adam Humphreys, and the rookie seventh round pick Dax Milne. We're gonna talk about the strengths and weaknesses of each guy. Uh, what 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 trait did they bring that the other guy doesn't bring? And we'll also say who will win the battle and why. And um, what the thing that each guy has to prove in order to win the job. And then once you take comments, we'll have people hop on, chop it up, we'll freeze after that, you know, so we'll be on for about an hour. Um, depending on Juan's availability, if Juan needs to go a little earlier, we'll cut off a little early, so depending on how things go. So, man, um, what is your thoughts on these free slot guys? Like, what, what are your thoughts on these guys? You think they have a good crop of slot receivers, or you think this is uh, mediocre? What are your thoughts on it? Um, so my, my thoughts on the slot position as, as in, you know, just, I guess as a whole, um, I really don't know about it because you see, we have two players that we really don't know that much about. And we have one veteran guy that we pretty, that we think we know about, but still someone has something to prove that being Adam Humphreys and Dax Milne. I don't even know if he's going to make the roster. So I really don't know that much about him. The only thing I know about him is that he was a main target for Zach Wilson. And the reason why I, I don't know that much about him is just because not because he's not good or anything. It's just he was a seventh-round pick. You know what I mean? And, and a lot of seventh-round picks don't tend to make the roster unless you're a guy like Cameron Curl. So it's not that I don't think he's going to make the roster. But the slot position – it's not. I mean, it's, it's not. It's it's a lot of potential there, but as of right now, we don't know. So that's really my whole take on it. I mean, obviously you have Stephen Sims, who I personally think you know ruined his chance last year, but we'll get more into that later in the show. And then, like I said, with Adam Humphreys, you have a you have a um a good veteran that you no, think could be no, something no. solid for you. And once again, Dax Milman, you don't really know. It's unknown at the moment. Yeah, um, my thoughts on that is basically what you're getting at, Juan. Like, Dax Mill's interesting. I'm a big Dax Mill guy. I'm a big, I was a big Zach Wilson guy going into the draft. So I did watch a lot of Zach Mill film, and I'm a big fan of him. But I said the college level, the BYU, he play, he's like he played the SEC or something like that. You know what I mean? So his skill set might not translate to the NFL as much as the next guy will play at a tougher, much harder conference. So um, he's interesting though. But we don't know about him. Like, I completely agree. Adam Humphreys got to stay healthy. I don't know what's going on with Adam Humphreys. He last couple of years kind of had a dud in Tennessee. Um, last year he had a good year. Was in Tampa. We don't know who he who he is now at this point in his career. Is he a walking concussion or is he a 800 yard receiver? We don't know. So I give him one year deal. We see see what he got. Is he, is he, is he a guy that we can rely on? Or is he a guy that is a waste of time? We don't know. That's for Steven Sims. I think he did ruin his chances to. The drop sheets and, uh, and, uh, and, you know, not being committed as much as he was in his rookie year. It's like his effort was – he the demand can get open like no one's business, but the effort of catching the football just wasn't there last year. He made way too many easy drops, way too many concentration drops. And I do think he ruined his chances here too. But I'm a little less on the he ruined his chances than you are, but I do think he did too. 
Yeah. Um, and and um, before we move on, I want to add on to not only was he not able to catch the ball, he wasn't able to catch punts, and also he wasn't healthy last year. He was hurt, and that kind of ruined his ability, which he was the best at was getting open and separating himself from the defender, and he wasn't able to do that because he was hurt for majority of the time last year. So not only him being hurt ruined his chances, but him obviously, you know, um, dropping passes. And I, I feel once he started dropping passes, once you start dropping passes, as you know that ruins your confidence so and once you don't have confidence everything else can go down the hole you know what i'm saying once yeah. a guy loses his confidence it's over and i really think steven sims at a point in time after he dropped so many passes and I, I, let's be real let's be real here these players are humans they have social media and we go in on these players on social media when they do bad so i'm pretty sure he was seeing what a lot of people were saying about him and in and, and social media and in the media world so confidence was lacking there and you could clearly see that so it was a lot to play in with steven sims do i think that's the real steven sims uh, i don't know i would like to think it's not i would like to think that the 2019 rookie steven sims is the real steven sims but only time would tell yeah can the real steven sims please stand up please stand up <laughs> and that's why i don't think he's quite out the mix yet because we don't really know if that is the real Steven Sims or not. We don't really know. Um, but venture to venture to believe that we probably at probably the real Steven Sims, at the guy that came in 2019 and burst on the scene, or is it the 2020? We really don't know. And there's one way to find out, and that's what camp is for. It's what the competition is for, this is what all this stuff is for, to find out what these guys can do. Yeah. So what's up, Yuki? Shout out to Yuki, shout out to Hawk, shout out to Malk. Yes, Malk is from your channel. I've never seen him in here. So shout out to you for being here, man. I very appreciate you, Mal. Good looking out. Shout out to Sergio, man. Thank you for being here. I know you definitely are a one guy subscriber. I've seen you in multiple streams with me. You know I'm saying watching one. So I do know you are a one support. So thank you for being here, man. Very appreciate you, man. And trying to get a different vibe over here at the Protect Fan. We very appreciate it. So uh okay, so we we, we, we talk about Steven Sims. Uh what's 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 one thing? That each of these three guys got to prove in order to make this team. Um, like, well, okay. You can probably talk about Steven Sims, but you can go a little more in detail about that. And, like, yeah. what's one thing that Dax Milne and Adam Humphreys have to prove to, to, to make this roster? Yeah, so I'll just continue with Steven Sims since we started off with him. He's the one that has to prove the most, in my opinion, just because, like, we just talked about – he, he had a, a bad 2020 season. We thought, well, I'm not going to say we, I'm going to say I, because I don't want to put everyone in that same, you know, conversation. But I thought, I thought personally that Steven Sims was going to be our second option alongside Terry McClellan last year, because we didn't have anything there. Then we found out Kevin Harmon towards ACL. So I thought he was going to be our second option. And we quickly saw that that wasn't the case. So I really think if Steven Sims wants to make this roster, because he's on the outside looking in, in my opinion, if he wants to make this roster, he's going to have to prove himself in training camp. And it's so important that we got preseason back this year because now he needs to ball out in preseason. You know what I'm saying? He needs to play these games. He needs to make the catches. He needs to show the ability to separate from the defender. He needs to be put back on punt coverage so he can get some punt um, reps back there to see if he can catch it. You know what I'm saying? Catch the punt, catch the kickoffs and whatnot. But that's the person who I personally think has the most to prove because he just was so bad last year and he has to show that he can stay healthy. As for Adam Humphreys, one thing that I think Adam Humphreys needs to prove is not his ability to play on the field, but his ability to stay on the field, his ability to be available, as you brought up, multiple concussions. We know how good Adam Humphreys can be if he can stay onto the field, but can he stay onto the field for 16, 17 games? That we don't know. And as for Dax Mill, I feel like he has less to prove or less to lose, you know what I'm saying? Because he's a seven-round pick, so a lot of people isn't expecting that much out of him just yet. So I feel like he can go out there and if he messes up, whatnot, and, you know, he can be as relaxed as as as, as with the Steven Sims, he can't, you know what I'm saying? But as with the Dax Mill, he can't really – he he, he can – I don't know how to put it. He could play relaxed. But at the same time with Dax Mill, you can't play too relaxed because you're trying to fight for a starting spot. So I think that's one thing that I that I could take away from each three is that Dax Mill probably has to, you know, play his heart out to make this roster. And then Steven Sims, same with that. And Adam Humphreys, can you stay healthy? Yeah. Um, 
I could probably agree with all of those things. Um, I think what Steven Sims needs to prove is that 2019 was not a fluke. Um, now everybody's saying that now you're looking at this year, you compare this year to his 2019 rookie campaign, and you're saying 2019 to fluke. I don't think it was a fluke because the only thing he did wrong last year as a as a wide receiver, I'm not talking about returns and special teams, I'm talking just pure wide receiver, was drop the football. He got open. He had separation. He broke everybody off. The route running was there. Just drop the football. Like, that's one thing he needs to prove as a receiver. He can consistently catch the football. No concentration drops. No concentration lapses. He catches the football before. Because I think Steven probably looking like, I'm going to catch this thing. I'm going to break this dude off. I'm going to get up out of it. I'm gone. I'm, I'm going to make a play. Instead of just one step at a time. Catch the football. Make the catch. Then figure out what you're going to do after you make the catch. You're going to break this dude off. You're going to shake him up. Give him a little shimmy. What you're going to do after that? Before all that, catch the football. Like, that's my number one thing with Steven. Just catch the darn football. Yeah. Now, Dax Mill, I think Dax Mill just got to show what he showed in BYU. Like, they, they, he's dependable. He's reliable. Um, he can stay healthy. He can hop with the football a little bit. He's six feet, which is a tall four, a slot receiver, actually. Um, so he can actually hop on the football a little bit. If you saw the BYU tape, he actually can get up there and Climb the ladder a little bit. Show show that you more than just a slot guy. I think if you can show that, I think he can make the team. And that's for Adam Humphrey. He's trying to show he's there. He has to stay healthy. That's it. That's all. That, that, that's literally it. Uh, let's take some of these uh, comments real quick. Hawk comments. Sam has the potential to be, to be a dog. He needs to set small goals for himself and work towards achieving them. I can agree with that. I can agree with that. What are your thoughts on that, bro? Yeah, um, same with I, same with you. I agree with that. Steven Sims just needs to go out there and, and play. I don't even think he needs to set goals for himself. He just needs to go out there and prove that, you know, like like you said, 2019 wasn't a fluke and 2020 was just, uh, you know, a bump in the road, yeah, which every player has in their career. Exactly. So I don't even think he needs to set goals. I mean, of course, that's cool and whatnot, but just go out there and play, man. Don't overthink it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, just yeah. play. Just go out there and play. Go out, go out there, it, it, like, go out to being a kid. Just, just go out there, go out, go out to being a kid and just play like you love the game. Like, don't yeah. think about the repercussions. Don't think about the 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 outside noise. Just go out there and play. Go out there and have fun, man. Like, I don't want to compare it to a show, but I mean, you, if you don't, you don't even watch All American or not, I don't even watch uh, All American. Uh, mm -hmm. you know what you're serious? Yeah, I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, so like when when like when South Crenshaw was losing consistently throughout their season during the show, uh, the, the the main character, especially James, say, hey, look, let's go out to being kids and just play like we love the game. Like, that's all you got to do. Play like you love the game, bro. Play, play the game like you love it, and you should be fine, bro. Like, I honestly think he can just go out to his roots, go out to what he did in 2019. I think he might still make this team. I, 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 I'm not counting him fully out yet. I'm not. Because mm -hmm. the potential is there. It's there. Like, you just got to just – Relax, man. Play, bro. Yeah, <laughs> oh, Dax, Dax Mill doesn't have Scotty. I mean, he can he can be beat in position battle. I don't think he has Scotty Miller speed though. He's a little slower than Scotty Miller. I don't know what he's ran to forty. Yeah, I don't know if he's as fast as Scotty Miller. I feel like the fastest slot guy we might have might be Steven Sims. I don't know about Adam Humphreys, but Dax Mill. I mean, yeah. He's fast, but he's not. I don't think he's in as Scotty Miller. You know what I mean? But I don't yeah. know. got to check the forty time. So we're waiting on that. But. Yeah, he ran. Oh, he, he's not fast. <laughs> not fast. He's quicker than fast. What did he run? He ran a good shuttle, but he ran a uh, four five seven to forty. He's like he's like a four six guy. Yeah, he's he's slow. He's he's definitely slow. Like I said, he can high point the football. He doesn't. He played like a bigger guy. Like it's weird. Like dude's only six feet. But so, he plays like a bigger receiver. It's it's weird. So know. if he's a four or five receiver and he's six foot, would he be more of as an outside receiver then than a slot? Maybe so. Maybe so. But everyone's put him in the slot box though. Like that's why I put him in the battle because they put him in this box as a slot yeah. guy because mm -hmm. of his height. Yeah. So uh, I think Dax feels a sleeper. I think he is if he can show that he's dependable. I, that's the one thing. He has to show. Like, that's the problem like, with these receivers. Like last year, the arm would drop. If it wasn't Terry, everyone's dropping past. Like even even Cam. Cam had his drop sheets. Even did. Okay. Everyone had drop sheets, bro. All of them. 
even Terry, <laughs> even Terry, especially even Terry, even Terry McLaurin. We can't absolve Terry McLaurin, either. especially uh, that Pittsburgh game. Was it the Pittsburgh game? Ooh, yeah, right yeah, down the middle? They drop, yeah, in the Seattle yeah. game, too. Yeah, 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 the nasty drop. Yeah, so, yeah, so even our best receiver drops, uh. Balls at times. So, I mean, we're not saying we expect you to make 100% of the grass, but if your ratio is 30 60 or or whatever it is, that's just bad. That's not good. You know what I'm saying? I want you to be up in that 70 80 range, or even higher yeah. than that. You know what I mean? So, really, really, your, your, catch, your catch percentage should at least be at yeah. 70. Yeah. 70 is a good number. 70 is for number one. It's like 70 is a really good number. Honestly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's a sleeper. All America's a bomb show. Yeah, God loves, God loves all America, man. Full of drama, full of foolishness, <laughs> but full of football too. Uh, forgive all the money because it will come. Exactly. Forget all the money. Forget all that crap. Just go out there and play. Like go out there and just play. Like, that, that's it. That's all you gotta do. Um, so we talk about what, what each guy has to prove. Um, what trait did each guy bring to the table that sets himself apart from the other guy? I think Adam Humphreys, his veteran leadership and his ability to, you know, obviously carve out a niche for himself on the team just because of how how long he's been in the league and the rapport and the chemistry he has with um, um, Fitzpatrick. Steven Sims, his ability to separate from the receiver, and I would love to say the ability to catch the ball, but he can't do that as of right now. So I think what sets itself away from the rest of these guys is just being quick, being being explosive, being a, um, being a guy that can get away and from the defender. And with um with uh, uh Dax Milne, um as much as I don't know about him, I can say that he's a guy that can you know be reliable if he's out on the field. He's a guy that's going to, that you know is going to get open. And he's a guy that you know isn't going to drop the ball, Steven Sims. So that's what I think uh, these three players <laughs> can get away from each other. <laughs> I have to agree with that one. That was yeah. a good way to say that. Drop the ball. Yeah. I, I drop the ball. Um, yeah. I can pretty much agree with all three of those. Like, I think, yeah, Steven Sims definitely exploded. He's more explosive than all the other guys. He's the most explosive guy tackles, to be honest. Um, that's why I don't think that's why I don't think I'm gonna count him out because his explosion sets him apart so far from the other two guys. Yeah. Um, as for Dax, man, I don't completely, completely agree. Um, reliability and the ability to high point the football, I think yeah. that's a very, very huge quality that slot receivers don't have. Like we saw, like, we saw like James Crowder do a, a little bit when he was here, like very seldomly, but like a guy that actually can do that consistently at the slot at the top at the slot position. Very, very rare. So I think that's something that he does bring to the table. And like you said, with Adam Humphrey, very on leadership. Um, he knows how to get open. He knows the nuances of the game. He knows how to go through a 16, 17 weeks, 17 weeks, 18 week season. Now, now we have an 18 week season. Um, like I say, so stay healthy. But when healthy, he knows the rigors of the NFL. He knows the ins and outs. He knows the little things you could pull off, the little slight push offs you could do without getting called. He knows all those small nuances. So, and He's a veteran leader, so I completely agree with that as well. Uh, who do you think will most likely be picked up by uh, picked or uh, be picked up by a team on division they're cut? Ooh, good question. Mm. Who, do who do I think is most likely to be picked up by a team in our division if they're cut? Kelvin Harmon, I think, yeah. could get picked up by the Eagles because they need all the receiver help they can get. Um, hmm, I'm trying to think. Peyton Barber could find his way on maybe the Giants because I mean I know they like go away with Wayne Gallman. They have Saquon Barkley coming back. I feel like they have like a rookie named Devin Brooks. Is his name Brooks or something or Book? I don't remember. Yeah, Devontae Booker. The guy yeah, Devontae is- Booker. That's his name. Yeah. So I can see like a Peyton Barber going there. Um. AGG could be another guy that could possibly go somewhere else inside our division. Um, I think that might be it. Steven Sims could be another guy that could um, find their way. Yeah, to to another guy, especially like Philly, because they need all the receiver help they can get. So I think those are all the guys for me. What do you think? Um, Steven Sims, Calvin Harmon, completely agree with those two guys. Even Antonio Ganey Golden, definitely agree with that. I think another guy who, if, if if cut, maybe a surprise cut just happened, but um, 
kind of surprising. If I, I don't think this would happen, but I think even a John Boston could get his cut. Um, if yeah. He, if, he, if he's like a cap casualty type of guy. Like, oh, we're paying to be on the bench, paying $3 million. I don't got time for that. I think he can get picked up by a team like the Eagles because their linebacking core isn't the best in the world. They can, like, they can, they can use a guy like that as a veteran presence. Um, Trying to figure one more guy that if they were cut. To say that ever, if he would cut too, I think he would be picked up by a team. Um, mm-hmm. Made up the Cowboys. They say he's in the, he's in the best in the world. And he, he even made a Giants. think he's another special teamer. Yeah. Another four special team, special teams captain, guy that knows how to play specials all the time. So, yeah, I think those guys would be the most likely guys he picked up if they were cut um, for a division rival to pick up. So, that's a good question, Hawk. Let's see if any other questions in the comment section. Uh, I think Dax Miller had more T's than Humphreys and Steven Sims. All three of these guys are making a roster. One of them would make the roster. So, uh, well, I, yeah. Ooh, cool. well, I, a lot of touchdowns. Well, first, he has to make the roster. And since he's a seven round pick, I'm not going to say he can't make the roster because look at guys like Cameron Curl. That was an example. But it would be a little harder for him to get five to six because uh, I, th- I would like to assume Adam Humphreys is going to be the starting slot to at least start off the year. So I would have to disagree with that right now only because I think he, it's a slim chance that he even makes the roster. And uh, yeah, so uh, I mean, it's not impossible, but I don't, I personally don't see it. I think it's highly unlikely as well. Um, I just don't see it at this moment in time. It could happen, I just don't see it at this moment in time right now. Um, but definitely could happen. Uh, Steven Sims would get cut, not necessarily. I, 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 I wouldn't put the, the nail in the coffin yet with Steven Sims. Yeah, I see how training camp goes. Yeah, I see how training camp goes. But I, I think if Steven Sims shows you can catch the football and be consistent at catching the football, I think he's going to make the team over both Dax and Adam Humphreys because he, he's so explosive. Like the explosion like makes a big difference. The more supposed playmakers you have, the more chance you can get to get make big plays. So I definitely think that if he shows you can catch the football, he might make the team. That's a chance. Mm-hmm. It's a fake chance because he has to catch the football. <laughs> like, chance nonetheless. Chance nonetheless. So, uh, so I said each trait that everybody got, um, each each what, what each what each guy had to prove. Who even wins the job? At the end, at, at everything, everything said and done. Mm. Who's our slot specialist when everything is said and done? I think it's Adam Humphreys, just because I feel like he's the better out of the group and he's the veteran leader. So I think it's gonna be Adam Humphreys. Okay. Um. Me, I I want to lean to Humphreys. I really want to lean Adam Humphreys. I just got a feeling he's gonna get hurt. I I, I I don't want I don't I don't want to wish that on nobody, and I'm not wishing it on him at all. But it feel like he's going to get hurt. Like I just I don't know why. I just feel like he can get hurt. Are y'all more excited for the preseason or the regular season? Because the preseason is so important. Get a chance every star player can get hurt. I'm excited for the regular season when the games actually count. If we go see some preseason football, how much you want? Yeah, I agree. I mean, um, preseason, it's going to be good this year only because we didn't have it last year. You know what I'm saying? So we we want preseason. We want to at least see some kind of ball. So I think preseason is going to be more fun like than ever this year only because we didn't have it last year. But normally, like, we wouldn't care about preseason. So, regular season for sure. It's nothing like that. First week of the season, waking up on Sunday, man. Just finally. And it, like, yeah, of course, we want Washington football. But it don't even have to be Washington football. Just to turn on NFL Network, man, and just see all the games, like, about to come on. And, uh, you know, the reporters that morning in the stadium talking about, like, it's nothing like that, man. I, and I don't mean to go off topic, but basketball. Nothing. Basketball is opening day. Baseball, hockey. No, I know none of us watch hockey, but like you get what I'm saying. None of that competes. I watch the NFL. Every now and then. Every now. And then. <laughs> yeah. I watch the Caps. Cap. Yeah, yeah. Me too. I only do it in the playoffs, but I don't know. I don't know what be going on, <laughs> but I just be watching. But nah, nothing like NFL opening day is 
nothing could beat it, man. So regular season for me, for sure. I mean, but I will understand why some people like preseason. If you're all into the, oh, who makes the roster and what is this guy going to go if he does, man, if you're all into that, I understand why preseason might be better for you, but nothing like regular season, man. Regular season all day. Like, like you said, wake up week one, Sunday. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You probably give it a morning, go to church. At the church, like, <laughs> football time. Let's go, baby. You rush home. You know, from, game from, on, noon, baby. from noon to eight every Sunday, man. Ain't nothing like it, man. It's always nothing something Sunday, on. <laughs> watch yeah. NFL Red Zone. See everybody making these spectacular catches in the end zone and watch a fair team play, play most time a division game. Not yeah. this year, <laughs> but, you know, normally a division game off of a team. We're playing the yeah. Eagles one for I don't know how long. I got tired of that. I I I just thank goodness the schedule schedule has changed that because it was getting really annoying. It's like, bro, every week, every every single week one we play the Eagles. Like, can we stop playing the Philadelphia Eagles? Can you switch it up, please? Like, mm-hmm. thank you. Like, god dang. But I hit on I hit on there. But get to see our fair team play against somebody that's not in preseason and not actually game planning for us and yeah. it's just fun man it's just fun to see bro like it's just fun mm-hmm. seeing uh mr fitz fitz magic or tragic or patrick whatever you want to call them it, 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 it's just gonna be fun man it's week one it's week one bro it's week one yep. it gets no funner than week one i'm sorry like even after like we, we get week five week six like okay it's football this is great but bro yeah. you might be the guy he might be our guy. I hope so, man. Oh, I, 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 we see, we, uh, so I, I, oh, by the way, I'm picking. I'm going to probably pick Adam Humphries as well. I don't want to pick Adam. I want to pick Dax Mill so bad. Like I, I just want to see, see, see the young guy win. I want mm-hmm. to see the Sims actually win this battle. I really do. Like, I want to. I just want explosive guys on the field, and I think that Steven Sims is so explosive. He just need to catch the daggone football. Like, just catch the football. I, if he caught the football, I had no problems. Like, I, I would be so excited to see this man in our uniform. But the drops, he's really pissed me off last year. So, we was definitely see our schedule was solid. Y'all, the Niners' schedule was very interesting. Y'all have a very interesting schedule, say at least. Very interesting. Yeah. Very, very, very intriguing. If they if they could stay healthy, man, they're they're a top five team in the NFL. Um, assuming that Trey Lance is the quarterback. I mean, I don't I don't hate Jimmy Garoppolo or not, but he can't get it done, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, he he he, he won't get it done in the major moments. Like you saw Super Bowl. He yeah. might even say his mind open. Post round yeah, wide open. He 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 ruined his chance. <laughs> Why open a man with Sanders? Too? I said, dang, he is so wide open. How you miss this dude, bro? Like, that's trash, bro. Bro, yeah. even wait. I lost a lot of money off the, off the Niners, too. So I, I'm a little biased. I'm kind of <laughs> mad at them. I lost, lost, lost a pretty, pretty penny off their foolishness. Yeah, man. Then on top of that, the, the, not to get off our, our team and whatnot, but the NFC West as a whole is going to be exciting to see because literally this is my first time in a while, probably no second time because last year it was like that too. But this is like everybody in that division has a chance to win a division. Seattle, L.A., San Francisco, and even Arizona. So, like, everybody has a chance to win that division. It's not just going to see. I could see Trey Lance starting by week three or week four, probably even earlier. Who who knows? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't I don't know about um San Francisco that much. Oh no, nah, like I know about him, but as in as in like recently, I don't know how he's been doing as far as OTAs and whatnot, because I haven't been really looking that into San Francisco. But maybe if he can have a good training camp and a good preseason, maybe he will, you know. Yeah. I wish I I really wish they trade Jimmy Garoppolo away just to open just open that door for Trey Lance and like look ain't nobody behind you ain't nobody in front of you just go out there and be Trey Lance like wow. go out there and be you. He but, said you know, he said LA is not winning the division. I, I beg to differ. I think they're the favorites to win the division. I think they're the favorites to come out the NFC. Honestly, period. Period. <laughs> they had. They got the best def- They got the best player in the NFL. I don't care about Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, Aaron Donald is the best player in the NFL, bro. Like, it, who's go? Who's who can block him? Literally, this man. This man gets, he goes into the game knowing he's going to get triple teamed and still finds a way to end the game with three sacks. Like, come on, man. Like, and then not to mention your your secondary is led it by 
by Jalen Ramsey. And now what was holding y'all back was Jared Goff. Now y'all got Matthew Stafford. Mm-hmm. Or not y'all, but them. Now they have Matthew Stafford. I'll, they're the favorites to win a division. Now, am I saying they're going to win a division? No, but I nope. personally think they're the favorites to at least win that mm-hmm. win the division. But we'll see. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I do think that the Rams should be the favorites. Uh, I do think their defense is a little weaker, though. I do think them trading Michael Brockers away, losing John Johnson crazy, and losing Troy Hill are all huge losses. Don't get me wrong, but I think they even upgraded wide receiver position. They 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 drafted a kid, they drafted him in the second round, got the kid's name, but they drafted him, picked up D, D- Jax for whatever that's worth. They picked up D Jax. And they yeah. still got Cooper Cup and Robert Woods, got Cam Akers. You lose Gerald Everett too. To, to the division, I'm, let me get out the way too. All right, they lose Gerald Everett to the uh C. Seahawks, but still, I think they're a better team than the Niners right now. But, I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know about that. Oh man. my gosh, he's trolling. He's trolling himself. He's trolling himself. He's trolling himself. It's, it's that's all bias. Uh, Hold I, on. I, so, so he thinks. So he thinks, and that's not a bad take. I mean, I could very well see. The NFC West having three playoff teams, but I don't know yeah, if that's going to happen. Seattle is good, but without, but besides Russell Wilson and 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 Tyler Lockett and um DK, and DK Metcalf, that defense is still weak. Arizona, we don't know what they're going to be. I know a lot of people don't like Cliff Kingsbury. We don't know what they're going to be. I'm mean, like I said, I could see it, but you got to account for the two, three, actually three teams in in the NFC East that can all compete for a playoff spot. Us, New New York and Dallas. That's three teams right there. Then you go to the NFC South. You have the Bucks. You got the Saints. You got the Falcons, and you have the um, who's who? Carolina the Panthers. The Panthers. So Bucks are obviously the favorites. We don't know what the Saints are going to be with without Drew Brees, Drew but Brees. people just assume that they're going to fall off a cliff, which could very well be. But I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Then you go to the NFC North. You have the Packers. You have the Vikings, who a lot of people are sleeping on, who I think could possibly be a playoff team too. Yeah. Probably most likely a wild card, but we don't know what the Packers are going to be because we don't know if Aaron, if Aaron Rodgers is going to play. Yeah, we don't know. So, so we don't know if that's going to happen. That could open the doors for guys like the Lions. I, but, I mean, I don't think you, the I Lions. Don't. Yeah, because Chicago, they literally made it to the playoffs last year. People, I think people forget they made they, they made it to the playoffs last year, carried by that defense, and they had no quarterback. If they can get a quarterback. Which in Justin Fields, I'm hope they hope they that they got, they can be a playoff team. So like I said, it's not. I'm not saying like it's not impossible. I could very well see three NFC West teams making it, but it's highly unlikely because you have three NFC East teams that can make the playoffs too. You have three NFC West teams. You have two NFC North teams, and you you have maybe two NFC Souths. I, I know a lot of people don't want to say. It. I know they want. They think the Saints are just going to fall off a cliff, but you have you have. A lot, man, and I don't know if that's likely, but it can be possible. I got a sleeper for you. Bold prediction for you. I think the Carolina Panthers made the playoffs. With Sam Darnold at quarterback. I think they made the postseason. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. So it's seven. It's seven, right? It's Mm -hmm. seven. So, Yeah. yeah, they did change it. Seven. Um, Carolina, that offense, Sam Darnold, Christian McCaffrey, DJ Moore. Um, uh, what's the other guy? Terrence name? Marshall Jr. Yeah, Terrence Marshall Jr. I'm trying to think of the other guy's name. Um, Robbie, Robbie Anderson. Anderson. There we go, Robbie Anderson. And who was that tight end? I feel like they drafted one. Uh, Tommy Tremble. Tommy Tremble. There we go, Tommy Tremble. So offense is solid. Obviously, led it by Christian McCaffrey, but it mm-hmm. all doesn't matter mm-hmm. if Sam Donald is isn't you know good. But if sure. if Sam Donald is is average at best, I could very well see them making a wild. Card. I know I don't think they're going to win the division because of the Tampa. Oh, no, 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 they're going to win the NFC South. I could see <laughs> I could see Carolina make. I wouldn't be surprised if Carolina snuck in at a nine and eight or uh, or ten and and and, and uh, seven record. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't be surprised, but I don't think it's going to happen. Honestly, I don't think it's going to happen. I just had a, I just a kind of a bold prediction that they could do it. I just mm-hmm. talked about that. If Sa- if Sam Darnold's any good, if we were completely wrong about him in New York and we thought he was just cold trash, which he's not, if, 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 if we were wrong about Sam and Sam is any good, they should make the playoffs. I think that's the key. Like they have offensive weapons. They defensively, they're, they're, they're average. They're okay. 
Love me some Derrick Brown. The boy's a monster. Um, Dante Jackson's a solid corner. John Jer- Johnny Chin's a really good safety. They have some good defensive pieces, but really the offense is going to carry them to a postseason. And if it's going to be the offense, Sam Donald's going to have to carry them to a postseason. I think yeah, it can. I think it can. Uh, but the. Brackets over there are just mad. They have two rookie cornerbacks, and one of them just got arrested for domestic violence. They have Rashad Brill, who's going to be average there. And so they have Patrick Peterson. I think they're, they're second they're just mad. So they lost Anthony Harris, which is a huge loss. I'm sorry. I don't care what anyone says. Everyone says, oh, but Anthony Harris fell off last year. I don't care. They, that's a huge loss. That's a huge loss to me. So, And they're, they're second, they're, they're, their corners are mad. I, I like Mike Hughes, too. I'm going to rephrase, too. Mike Hughes, that's pretty good. But outside of Mike Hughes, they're really scared of their corner position, so. What thoughts yeah. on the uh, Vikings secondary? Yeah, um, I know they got Pat Pete. I mean, old, but Rashad Breland, and uh, they still like they like you said they still have Anthony Harris, right? Um, they lost Anthony Harris. Oh, they lost Anthony Harris. That's what he's an eagle now. He's an eagle now. Oh yeah, he is. See, see, I don't even see. I ain't even paying attention to the Vikings for real. But I mean, yeah, they they they're solid. I mean, I like the front the front line. They added Dublin Thomason to go along with Daniel Hunter. I'm, I'm happy about that because they got him out of the NFC East and uh, away from us because Dalvin Thompson was arguably a good D lineman for um not good he was great for the New York Giants great so, great, great run stuffer too so they're they're solid and along with that offense if Kirk can get it going with Jay Jettis man who I personally think it was the best rookie wide receiver last year along with Adam Thielen and um they and Dalvin Cook who is arguably a top three running back in this league if they can get it going on offense and just get some average play out of that defense I could see them possibly um, making a wild card. Now, like I said, they could possibly win the North, especially if Aaron Rodgers don't come back. But if Aaron Rodgers does, it, is is back, the Packers is winning that division, no question. So yeah, no, no question, no question. Packers are losing that division. If if Aaron plays, and if he doesn't, I think it's still a chance they win the North. It's just it is just decreased a ton because it's like. Oh, now it's on Aaron Rodgers. I got what I do. Who, who are they going to have to put at quarterback? I'm, I've been hearing that Jordan Love. Love. Jordan Love has been terrible in OTAs. That's what I'm hearing. He had a he had one bad day. I know he had one bad day. But I heard about. Hmm. He had one really good day. He had a couple of average days. He had another bad day. Toward the end of minicamp, it was a, it was a horrible day. Like, he had two horrible days, two average days, and one really good day. So don't really know how to. Surmise that. <laughs> I don't know how to analyze that. I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Just like the, the, the Bears in sync <laughs> on many fields this shit. Hall got jokes, but I had a pad one eleven. I don't know mm, no, no about that, man. You got to think about it like this. They got to play the Bucks twice. They got to play the Saints twice. And they got to play the um the, the the Falcons twice, who arguably, I mean, I don't know, because their offense got worse with Julio, but they got Kyle Pitts and they got Calvin Ridley. So, I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't think it's going to happen. Cause they gotta play, they gotta play the Bucks twice and the Saints twice. So that's possibly four losses right there, and then not account for the rest of their division. That's at least two. Oh, yeah. John. Mm-hmm. If you're talking splitting the both of them, that's at least two losses. Yeah. And, and and Falcons as bad as the Falcons been the last couple of years in division play, they're not bad. In division play, they give a lot of teams a lot of problems, a lot of go, and sometimes they bite that team in the you know what in the backside. So. Never know. Uh, I had no serious safety besides Harrison Smith. I can definitely agree with that. Uh, Humphreys need to play like he used to play. And, oh, oh, yeah, when he was in college in Minnesota. I actually had the Panthers split with the Buccaneers. Hmm, interesting. I don't know, but I'm sorry. Man. I, I mean, I, it's not impossible because, you know, great teams have their woes in the regular season, so it could be a possibility, but – I don't think it's going to man. I think the Bucks might. I don't know. Bucks man, they they too good. Man. I'm sorry, they too. Good. And considering the fact that they, considering the fact that they won the Super Bowl in their first year together during a COVID year where it wasn't no OTAs, no trend, no really uh mini camps or not no mini camps at all, no OTAs at all, and a very weird training camp. Considering the fact that they're getting a whole normal offseason with Tom Brady back there. 
Mm, man. Mm. <laughs> I liked it better when he stayed it on the stayed in the AFC, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then on top of it, they even got their roster even got slightly better too with the draft and everything too. So it's just like, bro. Yep. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> man, we we got to get through them if we want to make it to the to the to the, to the playoffs or you know in the playoffs rather. Yeah, if we want to make a run, we gotta get past Tampa. And that's. I want to do everything to avoid Tampa. If you make the postseason, I want to do everything to avoid Tampa until a um potential NFC Championship game. If possible. If, if possible. If possible. But, you know, it's almost impossible if you're a wild card team and you have to be the seventh seed and play the two seed. I mean, you'll play the lowest seed. Any, you'll play the highest seed anyway. So, mm-hmm. you're the seventh seed, you know. Run to Tampa in the division round, and that just feels beautiful. Hopefully, we could be. Hopefully, we could be a top three seed at least. Hopefully, if, if we're the fourth seed, we still avoid them. Like, as long as we're not a wild card team. Yeah. And the Buccaneers have to face Washington again. Yes, again. And and I'm making a bold prediction. I think we got that one, man. Especially if Heineke plays. I'm just saying. I, that's my bold prediction already. I think. I think. We own one. We own one, man. I'm telling you, we own one. Considering the fact that we almost won that game in the playoffs with Heineke at quarterback, I think I, we own one, man. We own one. If we don't get them in the regular season, we might get them in the playoffs. That's, 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 my, that's, my, that's my bold prediction, man. I think we could beat them in the regular season. I, it's not too far fetched at all. I do, too. That's in the regular season, they could be it, it could be napping. Okay, just wash the football team. Whatever. We don't care about them. Whatever. And granted, yeah, it might cause the overdose. Maybe it's the red skin. We don't care about them. And they can smash. You know what I'm and granted, yeah, they were missing their best middle linebacker or their best defensive player and Devin White. But still, hey, you know what I'm saying? We we almost beat the eventual Super Bowl champion. So. You know what I'm saying? So. It's with a dream at quarterback and with hardly any receiver help. I mean, yep. Cam had a good game that game, but, you know, Cam – bro, Cam Sims has done nothing in this league, bro, to make me think, oh, my God, it's Cam Sims. Like, he had a good game that game, but he also he also dropped what have, would have literally mm-hmm. set the tone for the game. My man Heineken mm-hmm. came in on what? Was it the uh, – start. I, I think it was the second or first job. I don't remember which one. Heineken – Heineke threw a bomb to the Cam Sims wide open. Would have set the tone for the game. Drops it. Drops it. And then and then thinking about like this too. We AG wasn't healthy. Soman, when did we have them? Was it is it in the middle of the season? I'm gonna actually check that right quick. I wanna know what week it is, because I wanna say before I make my, my bold prediction. It's week 11. Oh dang! If it's that week, then who? I mean, I feel like we could still be healthy during that time. But if it's like that, let me see. Yeah, so we got them in November, and that is what? What week is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's week nine. So, man, I would like to think by that time, Terry would be healthy. Still, because thinking about like this, Terry last year in the playoffs was playing on two bad ankles, two bad ankles. AG still suffering from that turf toe, and he and he tried to play. You know what I'm saying? Us having our hopefully a consistent quarterback play by that time, week nine, we we have a chance. You know what I'm saying? I really do think we could beat them, and then we play the Chiefs is another game who I'm excited to see, which I'm not expecting a lot out of them, but I mean, I just want to see fight. You know what I mean? So, like I said, I, I think we can beat Tampa Bay. And, and honestly, yeah, that, that, that's all I got to say about that. But I ain't going to continue to say too much because I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> I don't want to jinx it. I can feel, I can feel uh, with me, though, like, I just I just look I look at us, bro, like, at that point of the season when we, when we run into them, like, I truly think that's kind of the low part of the season for, like, elite teams, like, the Chiefs do you lose like they lost the game against the Raiders around that time last year, their first loss. Was that first was that first loss of the season when they lost to them? I think that was. It's like week nine or something, week ten. Mm-hmm. Um even when uh the Patriots were good, like they start eight and no, nine and no. Team catch them napping, they lose to them. Like it happened around that time of the season. So that's that's the time to that's the time to strike. Like yeah. 
right in the middle of the season, uh, kind of feel a little beat up, a little tired. Catch him napping. I, I think it can happen, bro. I mean, I don't know. Definitely. Yeah. We spank them boys, man. We spank them. We spank them. Spank them, spank them, spank them, spank them, spank them. Any other upsets you think you got this year? I want to say the Bulls three. I want to say the Bulls is no bad. For us? Oh, yeah, that, that's that, that's one that I could see a possible upset, but I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if we beat them just because it's week three. It's very early, and I'm glad that the schedule gods actually blessed us with having them early. Why? Because jo- Josh Allen, that offense, not saying that they couldn't be, but I, I wouldn't, I would highly doubt that they're already in full, you know, full season mode and full, you know, chemistry mode so i would I'm, i would like to think that we got them right at the right time where they're still trying to figure things out and we could possibly sneak one in on them but i mean i still don't think it's likely the chiefs i don't think we're gonna win that game the bucks is my upset of the year and other than that besides i mean looking at this schedule now actually i don't know if you have it pulled up on your end either but looking at this schedule it is not as hard as it was when it first came out Cause yeah. you gotta think about it like, like this: when when it first came out, we didn't know Aaron Rodgers possibly be not be there in Green Bay. Now he ultimately might be there, be back in Green. And then the, my, my, then this whole good conversation is for nothing, and my perspective changes back to how it was. But when when we when this per, when the schedule first came out, we thought Green Bay um having Aaron Rodgers, so that's where we were like, oh, that's a tough game. Kansas City, obviously a tough game, and. Buccaneers is obviously a tough game. Now, not now. Assuming Aaron Rodgers isn't coming back, that's two very tough games in my opinion. Very tough games. Buffalo is three, and other than that, every other game is. I wouldn't be surprised if we're the favorites in it. Yeah, I mean, the Cowboys. Yeah. The Cowboys in Dallas, we could be. They could be favored. The Seattle well, game. Yeah. I think that could be an even toss up, just because of Russell Wilson. Yeah. Now let me now let me say that I'm not sleeping on nobody. You know what I'm saying? Chargers very well could because the Chargers are a solid team. They could very well beat us. They you know might be the favorite week one. They, they might be the favorite in week one though. They might favorite the Chargers in week one. You want us unbeaten at home? Yeah. No. I personally think we're gonna win, but like I said, I I don't I wouldn't be surprised. I'm not I'm not sleeping on LA. But yeah, then yeah, after that, yeah. New York is a very even game. You know what I'm saying? After yeah. that, Buffalo is a game where I think we're we're gonna lose. The Falcons game is very is very you know, I should be favored today. New Orleans. I'm going to be in that game, too. You are? And Where's Atlanta? It? Yeah, I'm going to Atlanta. Me and my, hey. me and my dad, my uncle, we're going down there. Hey. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, me and Rico are going to meet up in person. And That's nice. That's nice. Hey, take some pictures at the stadium. I heard that stadium nice. Yeah. I got a stadium from the outside. Like, last time I was in Atlanta, I went from um, the Hawks Wizards last playoff series they had like, a couple years ago. When it John was getting built. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yet? yeah, yeah. I, I, they, 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 fin- they just finished. It. They just finished. It. Oh, like this, yeah. like, it's, like, it's like the year right before they tore the Georgia Dome like, apart. Yeah, like, Georgia Dome was still right there in the middle, and like the the Mercedes Benz Dome was right there, like brand new, spanking new. Mm-hmm. And then the Hawks like stadium was right there, so you got to watch the the Wizards spank the Hawks. That was cool. Yeah, so I'm not a Wizards fan per se, but I do cheer for them. But they, but same I, I, live same I, I live here, bro. So I, I'm I'm not gonna hate on them. You know yeah. So and then <laughs> yeah. And after that, New Orleans with no Drew Brees, I would like to think that that's a game that we're favored to win. That's Kansas right. City, another loss in my opinion. Green Bay, I don't know because we don't know if Aaron Rodgers is gonna be there. And then another game, Broncos. We don't know if Aaron mm-hmm. Rodgers is gonna be there. That's gonna be a, that's an even game in my opinion too. Tampa Bay, <laughs> Tampa Bay is a game that I personally think that we're gonna win, but they they they're the favorites, obviously. So we could very well lose that game. All our our schedule isn't as hard as it is. I think outside of Buffalo, a Buffalo, Tampa, and probably the Chiefs and the Packers, but I don't know because Aaron Rodgers. So I'm gonna just go Chiefs. Pat. I'm gonna go Chiefs. Bronc, uh, Bucks and Bills. Outside of those three games, our schedule is even. Everybody else is even. You know what I'm saying? So much has changed. I think we could beat Seattle. We almost beat them with Dwayne Haskins. The Raiders, another good team. I actually, I want to go to that game, man. I just want to go to that stadium. It's so, it looks so good on TV, man. It's gonna be so, fun. Uh, to see yeah, it's, it's I'm nice. another away game. My dad talking about because he like I'm trying to put, I'm trying to go to two away games. I was like. 
Well, Atlanta is an hour flight. I'm going. That's it. I have a friend <laughs> down there. I have a couple of friends that hang out down there. So I'm, that's nothing for me. I go out. I'm like, that's cool. And um, you should you go know, to the uh, you should go to the uh, the the, the uh, Raiders because the stadium's so no, I want yeah, it looks to, good. Bro. Looks I good, want man. to, bro. Like. Uh, I look at them flight tickets. It, it, it's like it's like three hundred round trip right now. It's not too bad. So mm -hmm. if I book something now, like early August, I will probably do it. But I, outside of that, and also like my 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 my, my friend's celebrating his birthday in Miami. I don't know what week that is. I'll check what the date is. I mean, if we played it off. Like, no, we don't play the Dolphins. I don't think we played. No, we don't play the Dolphins. I was Dolphins. thinking. Okay. Yeah, um, man. I, that's mean, yeah, nah, nah, nah. I, I, I I wish I wish we played the Dolphins. I I, I, I you no know, reason to go to Miami. <laughs> but <laughs> but um let's see let's see what, you know you know what you know what week that is the Vegas game um I'm looking at it right now um let me see um it should be week let me see here December fifth ooh ooh ah oh no oh no ah. That's week. That should be week twelve. Yeah, this is December fifth. Uh, uh, I might try to work that out. I don't know. I, cool. I gotta see because uh, my friend Kyle's birthday is that weekend. He had me on the helm. So if he changes his mind, uh, I'll go ahead and try to book it. Because <laughs> yeah. I do want to see that stadium, bro. Like, that stadium looks like dope. Like it don't look, it look crazy, bro, in a good way. Like that don't look lit. I want to go. Yeah, definitely. Not. And it's Vegas too, so. It's big. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and, and on top of that, like I said, I just personally think outside of the, those four games, maybe considering the, considering Aaron Rodgers' status, our schedule is pretty much even. Now I can come back two months from now or three months from now and see us getting kicked and be like, "Oh no, nah, I was wrong." But as of right now, I think our schedule is pretty much even outside of those three games. You know yeah, I, mean? I agree with that. I agree with that. And um, yeah. I've been the charge game with one of the tough one too. Though I've been some really tough ones. Yeah, all all our games just, are Justin Hurt, was, Justin Hurt was a dog. Yeah, mm -hmm. like like I said, all our games that that schedule are even. You know what I'm saying? So they could they could even be they could they're even to the point where we could be you know dogging the other team or we could get dog. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's even like I said, and I know it's like as a dog and stuff like that. But to be real. If Joseph, if we never injured Joe Burrow, he would have won rookie of the year. Only reason why Justin Herbert won rookie of the year is because Joe Burrow. Because Burrow was his year. That's true. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. So, so, part, and we probably don't turn our season around if Burrow don't get hurt. To be yeah, honest, we might yeah, not be talking we, about is our Super Bowl window open. Da, 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 da. We could have a five win team last year if we did not beat the Bengals in that game. And they would, and they, I mean, they weren't spanking us, but. That Joe game was Burrow close. Was a nice day on us. He was getting a yeah, nice that day. That game on us. was close before he got hurt, and they had to put in who? Ryan was it? Ryan Finley or? Really? Yeah, Ryan I think it was Finley. Ryan Finley. Before then, that game was close. You know what I'm saying? So, and, awesome. and then, and then AJ Green and um wasn't T Higgins? It wasn't T Higgins. It was somebody else that was just killing us. It was AJ T. Green and joining us. It was T Higgins. It, yeah, it had mm -hmm. to be. It was killing us, man. So I will. I'm, I'm, I don't like to see nobody get hurt, but Joe Burrow helped us turn our season around, definitely. My man, hold you right because T Higgins was just, just putting that work in on us. Him and Tyler Boyd were single handedly whooping us. Like, it was just bad. Like mm -hmm. even AJ Green got a little touchdown, and that's oh, we are getting destroyed over here. We can't get no pass rush. These dudes are getting open. They making big plays down the field. They marching down like it's nothing. Ain't no negative plays being being uh being halting them. Some of that turnover when Chase Young pop the living mess out of Joe. <laughs> he knocked Cuz head off. God, I said, dang. Yeah. Well, I said, dang, I, I said another word. Damn! <laughs> I was like, damn! What happened to him? <laughs> that was terrible, bro. Oh, I got the old logo one all day. <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with rocking that, man. That's vintage. Now it is, officially. <laughs> yeah. Now it is, bro. I'm about to say, man, I'm about to wrap it up here, man. I don't see extra comments, man. But I, I thank you, bro, for being on, man. This is an honor having you on. You know what I'm saying? Wrote a 3K for you, bro. Let's get you to that 3K. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. More, more milestones. You know what I'm saying? More, 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 more milestones up there for you. Uh, shout out to everybody that did hop in the stream. We'll get everybody a shout out when we get about it. Shout out to Yuki. Shout out to Hawk. Hawk! Uh, dang. A lot of Hawk and Yuki comments here. Uh, shout out to Sergio and to Milk. Yeah, Milk. Shout out to Milk. Easy. And shout, shout out to all you guys for comment, man. Thank y'all for stopping by. Very appreciate y'all. Um, I will be back actually live in about 30 minutes. I'm actually going to be doing my uh, The Fall and Skin series where I talk about a former Washington football team player who did not pan out and reason why I did not pan out. So I will be back on at 2.30. So I'm wrapping up here, man. Like, comment, subscribe. If y'all new, turn on notifications. Please subscribe to one guy's channel. I will put the link in the chat before we get up out of here. Um, I meant to do that. My schedule the stream. I didn't want to be on until yesterday. Well, mm -hmm. So, <laughs> my fault about that. But hey, I will be hey, hey, uh, I'm about to put the on right now. Please subscribe to Juan if you're not, man. Because that'll be, that'll be lit, man. That's my guy. And you got, you got, you got, you got hit that sub button, man. He be going crazy with, with his content, man. Young bro, know the heck you know the heck you talking about. Dang, bro, my man going crazy. So I'm about to put your uh, channel link in the chat. Oh yeah, my roommate sleep too. So let me, let me wrap this up for real. This not snoring in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to hold you. But yeah, so that so that's the, that's the channel link in the background and in, uh, in the chat. Please go subscribe to one guy You're talking sports, man. Road to three K. We've been five K, ten K. More milestones to my boy get that plaque. You know what I'm saying? Same for you, I'm man. Same for you. For I'm trying to see all of us get plaques one day so we can, we can talk about it one day. You know what I'm saying? So go ahead and sum them up, man. Like, comment, subscribe, man. It's how to take it easy. Uh, no regular outro here. I'm getting the heck out of here. I'll be right back anyway. <laughs> Peace, love, and blessings. Catch y'all next one, y'all. Peace.